Welcome. You're listening to Making Relationships Work. We're a company focused on women and their marriage. We lead and teach women just like you how to grow into and access whenever you need to your wise woman self, the part of you who is deeply connected to your purpose, your innate wisdom and your husband and family. We teach women in marriages how to rebuild trust and connection, to work through conflicts, no matter how deep, no matter how painful, and to lead your marriage to a place where the two of you experience marriage mastery. This podcast is about learning the systems and techniques that truly work to reconnect you back into your marriage so that you can experience the freedom that comes with a masterful marriage. Since this podcast is totally free, if you're getting tons of value and you want to support us and make sure that you get more of this good stuff, subscribe below and rate and review our podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hello, Women Making Marriages Work, and hello if you're watching on our YouTube channel or listening on our podcast channel titled Making Relationships Work. It's great to be back here with you. Feels like a little while since you've seen me and I've seen you. But guess what? Tonight we are answering, I am answering questions from our Women Making Marriages Work Facebook group. There's a thread in there where you can ask me anything and I pick them (laughs) and then answer them. And so tonight that's what we're doing. So tonight's question is from Laura Gonzalez. And it's a really simple question with a lot that goes on behind it. So her question is, any advice for neurodiverse couples? And so, yeah, I've got lots of advice for neurodiverse couples. And we have had um, quite a few women through the program who have been neurodiverse from their husband or partner. Um, Not everyone that comes through is married. And we have had quite a few partners that have been neurodiverse from their uh, wife or partner. And we have also had some neurodiverse children. And so wherever it lives in your family, it doesn't really matter. What really matters are the foundations that you use to understand each other. And when you understand each other, then we're looking at something totally different. Because when we understand, we're really able to make sense of someone else's world and go from there. And so that, I think, is where we'll start. So what we might start with is neurodiversity and what that might look like. So neurodiversity could be around autism spectrum disorder and all of the different variations of how that can manifest in a beautiful human. So the diagnostic for ASD, autism spectrum disorder, now envelops Asperger's. So Asperger's as a diagnosis is no longer used. And instead, the way in which we look at ASD, autism spectrum disorder, is we look at it across kind of eight different traits. And we look at it on a scale of this is very simplified, but high to low of that trait and how and what those traits are and how elevated or not elevated they are will depend on the experience you have with the person diagnosed or thought to have ASD. And so the answer I'm going to give you, your question is broad, but my answer is going to be equally broad because we're not talking specific traits, those eight traits. And we're not talking um, level of overall difference. So I'm not quite sure what those are. So the best conversation we can do is general. And in doing so, the foundations will come through of what you need to do and how you need to do it. So when we're looking at autism spectrum disorder and we're looking at those eight traits and we're looking at whether they're high or low, Those differences are, I'm trying to find a way to describe this easily. Those differences are things that neurotypical people might have to an extent, but perhaps not at the level. Maybe they would have more or less than someone who is neurodiverse. And so with big differences come, or potential big differences, comes the opportunity for really 
a sense of not being heard or understood and a sense of not fitting in, a sense of not feeling like you're on a team or you belong to something you understand. And that can come from both people, both neurotypical and neurodiverse. And so really what we're looking at at its simplest level is the art of connection, the ability to translate each other and yourselves in a context Perhaps we'd start with a home context first and then expand it more into the community. And an ability to see some of the traits that are diverse in the power of the superhero. So which parts of those make your partner, your friend extraordinary and which parts of those, and it might be two sides of the same coin, are causing pain or hurt. And how do we love both sides? So we're really looking at understanding the whole person. And we might talk about that from a child, a partner, our self perspective. It doesn't really matter who we're talking about. What we're trying to do is even in the parts that feel hurtful or grating or difficult or hard or astounding, finding a way to appreciate what they are and to be able to live with them is in a way that brings harmony, I think is what you're really asking me. And so when you are looking at ASD, um, we could loosely group it into functioning and kind of low functioning and high functioning. And so with no information from you at all, Laura, I'm going to assume moderately high to high functioning um, from your partner which means then that what we're really talking about is not having trouble with life skills, not having trouble with being able to um, have work or be a responsible citizen or be a reliable provider or um, parent or kind of community member, which is really common, right? It's very normal with people who experience neurodiversity to be a very integrated into society type experience. It's only the lower functioning or the higher levels of ASD that place us more in the disability kind of category. So we'll assume we're at medium to high and we'll assume that the biggest problems come from those really distinct differences. And I'm again going to assume that it's something in the empathetic range which has you feeling heard and understood because one of those eight traits is an ability to empathize or to imagine what someone else is feeling or to have that sense of being able to understand emotions at a deeper level. Sometimes for some people, the empathy emotional side is more blunted. And when that happens, neurotypical people can feel um, cast aside or can feel not important or can feel not tuned into, can feel not well cared for or well loved because it's not in a neurotypical framework. It's in a neuroatypical framework, the relationship. And so if we go down this path, which I'm guessing is where it's helpful to go, Laura, and feel free to comment and tell me if you want me to take it in a different direction. I would then say you're missing each other. So you're missing that sense of being heard and understood and well cared for, like we're under the same umbrella, we belong to the same team. And your partner probably feels, what might he feel? He might feel that life is just fine the way it is. He might wish that thing, emotions were less elevated, that he had more kind of peace. He might feel that um, everything is fine and why must there be such heightened emotional variances in the household experience or the partnership team marriage experience. And so that over time can have kind of two people who both want to feel loved and connected and supported and stable, feeling unsupported and unconnected and unstable and uh, misunderstood really. And so those experiences over time kind of build rocks between the two of them. And as those rocks kind of pile up, they get harder and harder to remember how much you love each other and remember that sense of belonging to each other. And instead you become kind of defensive of your position, you fight, 
you uh, feel misunderstood, you elevate your emotions even more. You might think about leaving or divorcing or dreaming of somebody else who is not neuroatypical and would understand you. And those kind of that cascade of separation is a common pattern for relationships in crisis anyway. But when you add neurodiversity to it, it can often feel even more jagged. It can feel even more um, painful because you think, how on earth do I, do we change something fundamentally so different as different types of neurology or brain diversity? And the thing is, it's totally overcomable. <laughs> but it is about um, recognizing that there is damage done between the two of you, kind of imagining those rocks between the two of you and you're on your own kind of separate sides of the room or separate sides of the bed or separate mountains maybe is a better way of saying it. And it's hard for you to really understand how to have a conversation that ends differently. And I think that's what you're really asking me is, if we are diverse and we are different, how do we work through that? How do we repair that? How do we create a relationship that uses his strengths and my strengths? And in doing so, we can remain connected and bonded and feel well loved and appreciated, even though we're different, because there's differences in every relationship, whether it's neurotypical or not. There's differences anyway. And this is no more than just differences but the differences feel perhaps insurmountable because of the lack of the sense of biology the same or neurology is a better way of saying it, the same. So first of all, it might help to, to look at whether you have any beliefs around whether it is possible to overcome this together. And I say it is and definitively is. <laughs> And so I want you to have a look is, do I believe that it can't be? Have I got evidence for why this won't work instead of looking for how it could work? You're asking me questions. So I assume you are looking for how it could work. There is a set of skills in my masterclass that might be helpful for you. Shortly, I'm going to be updating that masterclass into a whole new version. And so those skills aren't going to be there anymore. So if you haven't watched it and you want those skills, I want you to go ahead and watch that. Those skills will help. But when we're talking neurodiverse, we are really talking about leaving your mountain and going across to understand your friend's experience of the world and what he needs. And then you inviting him across to your mountain and allowing him to understand your experience, what neurotypical looks like and feels like for you. He might understand that because he is in a world that is largely neurotypical, but he might not understand you and what you need and why you need it and how to do that. And I think that is the crux of what we're really talking about is a series of conversations that need to be created and had together that allow you to visit each other's experience of life. And when you can visit each other's experience of life, then you can kind of update your map of each other when you've updated that map of each other, then you update the way in which you interact and therefore you're creating something new. Now, without any details around the two of you, I can't go into much more deeper specifics around how to be different together. But if you enjoy the masterclass, you're welcome to book a call with us and we can talk you through what that might look like more on the call. Um, the call is free. And if we feel like we are a good match for you or you feel like you're also a good match for us, then we might extend an invitation for you to join us in the program. And if we don't feel like you're a good match, that you might be better off served, being served by somebody else, then we can point you in that direction as well. So yeah, neurodiversity is like any type of diversity. It's differences. Differences need to be understood in order to be received and things to be done differently. But the biggest gift I think, Laura, that you can have is to look for the positives that live in that beautiful brain of his and to enjoy the differences as much as you can and the ones that hurt you or him to be talking about those ones and to be clearing those boulders of pain that lie between the two of you. 
and looking at any beliefs why this won't work, that you can't have this and really kind of yanking those beliefs out of your beautiful mind garden. They're kind of weeds, right? And that's how I would do it. So check out the masterclass, book a call if you would like to with us. We work with neurodiverse couples quite frequently and I would, yeah, I think you've got what you need to make some different decisions and to have some different conversations and to look at your relationship in a different way. And it's been lovely to talk generally about you. I can't talk specifically because I don't have the details, but I hope you're well. And um, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you're feeling fired up and you're ready to grow and you want to know more about how to do that, here is what I want you to do now. I want you to watch my marriage masterclass. This masterclass will show you how my clients have turned their struggling marriages into thriving marriages, even without their husband's buy-in. How my clients have gone from cycles of poor communication, disconnect and loneliness to being teammates and soulmates with their husbands again even after they've already tried everything. And the proven system my clients use to start transforming their marriages in minutes, not years, because life is too precious to waste one more minute in an unhappy and unfulfilling marriage. So if this is what you're looking for, I want you to click the link below and take a look at my masterclass.